Hey, this is uh, part two of organic nomenclature. It's actually one of my favorite topics in organic chemistry. So these alkanes are pretty cool, but they're kind of boring, really, even if you put some methyl groups on them and stuff. So there is this thing called functional groups, which I have up here. And essentially, if you just take any uh, one of those alkanes and you put a particular, change the structure with a little group on it, uh, then it changes the function of the compound and it can kind of do it in an almost predictable fashion. So a perfect example would be like an OH group. Uh, OH is an alcohol group, so if you take butene and you put an OH group, you get butanol or propanol and it's from propane. And it and you can almost predict, like, because OHs are really polar and they've got hydrogen bonding, there's more intermolecular forces. You know, boil at room temperature, they're a liquid, and you can do all kinds of really cool things with them. Uh, part of it, too, is, you know, these things are really polar, so that would dissolve polar things like the salt on your skin, and the part that's non-polar might dissolve things like oils, and so you can kind of custom make these compounds to get them to do some really neat things. Uh, and I think that's what makes chemistry kind of fun. So we're just getting scratched service, but there's some really great stories and things that we could talk about. So let's go ahead and work through this. And just first, let's look at some functional groups here. Uh, first one, uh, and I apologize if this is hard to see, but if you can blow this up, I'll try and describe this. Um, first of all, there's, we talked about alkenes and alkanes, um, and, and alkynes, right? So here's like ethene, ethine, right? Then there's the, uh, we have methane, but if you put in an OH, that's the functional group, you then get a, you add OL, so it'd be, instead of meth, um, methane, it'd be methanol. Uh, and that, that's used as a fuel in, for instance, uh, cars, on, in some cars, along with ethyl alcohol. Um, we'll skip the dimethyl ether. Uh, Haloalkanes, uh, think of chlorofluorocarbons. <laughs> and to put a, put a hole in the ozone layer, unfortunately, but uh, uh, again, you just take off an H, you put on a, a CL. Um, so this would be like chloromethane, and if it were bigger, we would have to put a number on it, like one uh, chlorobutane would be a, with, you just put a chlorine on the first carbon in butane. Um, now, we'll skip the amines, but anybody in chemistry knows about DNA, that's where these amines come from. Uh, now, here's a couple right here, which I think are kind of cool. Look at these right here. Aldehyde, okay, a ketone, and an ester. Okay, now all of these involve, to some extent, if I have on the end of a long carbon chain, a carbon double bonded to an oxygen with an H, that's called an aldehyde. If I have it, that carbon double bonded to the O in the middle of the chain, it's called a ketone. And then if I have it in the middle of the chain with an oxygen between the next carbon chain, it's called an ester. Why are these important? Well, these are used in a lot of different solvents. These are used in a lot of very sweet uh, smelling and tasting things. So a lot of flavors and smells come from this. Um, they're in nature and like fruits and stuff. Great story in the 1920s. Scientists would get perfumes by extracting these from just fruits. And they wouldn't last very long and they were kind of hard to deal with. Coco Chanel in the 1920s hired an organic chemist who had just figured out how to make these. Uh, and, he, and she said, I, I want some a really nice smell. So he uh, made 10 of these with just different chains on both sides, you know, like with the, I think it was the esters. And he just put them in bottles and just put numbers 1 through 10. So he said, hey, I'm done. Come on over. I've got some different smells. She picked them up, checked them. And, of course, her favorite, as I'm sure you can probably guess, was number 5. And that's how we got Chanel number 5. Uh, it was all about organic chemistry, really. So it's kind of a neat thing. It really opened the door for a billion-dollar industry. Um, the other reason why these are kind of cool is because uh, when you um, put these in foods, uh, they make the food smell and taste better. But again, because they're kind of nonpolar, if you take out all the fat, which is nonpolar, it takes the esters out and takes out the flavor, too. Okay, so um, one of the things we have to do is talk about naming. So let's just go through a couple of these. Uh, alcohols we talked about. Uh, if you just make sure to put down the number of the carbon that it's on, uh, if it's a larger than like probably um, uh, ethane, and uh, it ends in OL, like propanol, butanol. 
uh, and then the number goes in front of where that functional group is. Yay! If we go to, um, my kids are cheering in the background because they're so happy to learn this. If we talk about aldehydes, these are always on the end of the chain. Okay, so there's like little O and H right there. Uh, so that would be called, instead of ethene, you put the AL ending. So it's called, um, so here's an example. This would be ethanol. Um, you don't need any numbers. It's always on the end. For uh, ketones, uh, you probably would need a number, but they're always in the center. There's always going to be the rest of the carbon chain on both sides. So for this one, three carbons, propane, but because we now have that ester part there, um, a ketone, excuse me, ketone, and there's two on the side. So we just took off two H's, put the L in the middle. It's now propanone. If we had anything bigger than propane and we put that on there, we'd probably have to put a number with it, like two butanone as an example. Um, the ester is a little tricky, but not impossible. Look at where this carbon is with that O and find carbon attached to it. This changes ethane. So we call it ethanoate. Okay. And then you put in front of it whatever alkyl group is here, which is the methyl. So it's methyl ethanoate. Um, a huge one, by the way, is a car. So th those are the three nice smells. Uh, this is one called a carboxylic acid. This is also used in a lot of food chemistry where there's acids like uh, citric acid is a carboxylic acid. Vinegar is a type of carboxylic acid. Again, pretty easy. These are always on the end. They have a group that a carbon double bonded to an O with an OH. There's in the acidic H is that very last one right there. Just count the carbons. Okay. So instead of ethane, it's now ethanoic acid. So. Uh, it's great that I talk about this, but honestly, you really have to try this. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can do this, if I can figure out how to use this. So there it is. Um, and again, here, here's some, some other ones that we can look at. Uh, it talks about the R group and aldehydes and ketones and butanone and ethanoic acid and some of what we talked about. So let's, let's try to name these, okay? Let's see where these come from. So this right up here. Again is let's see so again one two three four so that'd be butane double bonded O with an O and there's an alkyl group so it's probably an ester right so it's butane O or butan O eight and this is ethyl so that's ethyl butanate that's where we got that from uh, here definitely a carboxylic acid okay one two three four butane, but now we call it butanoic acid. Next one, then, is, hey, here it looks like a ketone. Let's count the change, right? One, two, three, four, five. Pentane? Nope. It's uh, pentanone. So we got that part, but we have to say it's two, because there's one, two. It's it's on the second, second spot, not one, two, three, four. Two's a lower number than four. Oh, here's one, and it's assumed that the H is right here. This is on the end. Okay, double bonded with that O. There's a little H right there that is assumed. Let's count. Okay, let's count. One, two, three, four, five. It must be pentane, but now because it's an aldehyde, we change it to pentanal. Last but not least, our good old friend in alcohol, right? Let, let, let's, let's count the carbons. One, two, three, four. It'd be butane, but it's on the, so one, two, three, do I put it on the third or on the second? Well, two is lower than three, so we call it two butanol, okay? So there's going to be a little assignment that you're going to have, uh, and what it is, it, it's going to ask you to um, go up to, uh, go up to this one right here, and it says you're going to have to write down uh, the structure, the name, like so, for instance, Let's take this one, the structure, uh, which is an aldehyde, you know, they put down the structure that this is ethanol. Um, and then it's going to add, and here's, you know, probably what this condensed formula here or the structure. But then it's going to ask you to make up your own. Um, and you can make up any one as long as it's not on the slide. Or one that I give you, like, so for instance, instead of ethanol, you could do three, and, that, and that'd be one, two, three, and then with the aldehyde ending right there. And then that would be propanol and draw out the structure. Um, so those are just a few of the functional groups. And also now, if you start reading labels, 
you're gonna see these names all over the place and now you're definitely gonna know what what they are and what they do um, and thanks a lot uh, this is it for naming functional groups